You know, for, for me, Manchester United still need another central defender. Yeah. You know, top draw central defender. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, going to get Koulibaly, for example. I don't know. It's, it's difficult. It, to, to ask us that question, I think, is really difficult to, to answer because, you know, who is truly available? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, look, that they absolutely need, need a centre-half, yeah. as far as I can tell. Um, and possibly a mid... There's a lot of the same player in midfield. And I'd like to actually see someone a bit different, you know, mm. someone, a, a driver even. I'm not talking about someone who can pick teams apart like an Ericsson, for example, but like a Kante, someone who's just mm. got a bit of fire in midfield that can get everyone else together and get mm. them playing on the, on the front foot. Those are the two positions, I don't know what the names are, but I think those are the two positions for me that I, I look at and think, yeah, they've got, that's where they've got to strengthen. Not a striker? Well, well they are, presumably, because they're after Haaland. Oh. So presumably they, they are looking for But do you think they need it? Do, um, or are there other areas they should be focusing on first? No, I, th I, think, um, I, I think, yes, they do probably need another striker um, or somebody to, to become their main striker. Martial doesn't convince me mm. as playing up there as, as the top striker. Um, I don't think Rashford is ideally suited to it. I think he's better from a wide position. So on that basis alone, um, you know, not many people like Lukaku, but he scored yeah. goals yeah. as that main target man, didn't he? No, was he sold or was he on loan? He package? was sold. Yeah. Chris Smalling is on loan currently. Yeah. He's the one that went out to Italy on loan. Yeah, and just, Sanchez, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it would be a nice luxury to have to be able to get a straight one, but I think the the um, defence is the, the main key because when I, you know when you look at Rashford, Martial, James, there is goals there. You've got you've got Matter, you've got the young boy Greenwood as well. Pogba come back. Mm. It, that, that end of the field is, is dynamic enough. I think the defensive issues or that midfield dynamo that you can get um, is a lot more valuable. How much uh, was McTominay missed today? We're hearing he could be out for up to a month with an injury. Obviously, nothing fully confirmed, depending how fast he recovers. But yeah. has he been a big miss for Manchester United? I mean, he has been, he has been a, a miss. Is he head and shoulders above Matic as a, as a, as a replacement? I'm not overly sure that there's a... a you know, a million miles between them as players. Um, but what you do know with McTominay is that he, at least he would have had a go today. Yeah. You know, he's got a bit of heart and, and, he, and he, would have had a, he would have had a go. He wouldn't have laid down against this Arsenal team no matter how good they were, they, how well they were playing. And I, I didn't see that from enough. So in that sense, yeah, he, he was a miss and they'll, they'll want him back as quick as well, possible. I think they missed him. Yeah. Missed him? Yeah, just for that little bit of extra grit and determination. Yeah. There. Seems to be always want to be available for the ball. You know, I like I like Matic as a player, but I, I, I think they've really missed McTominay. Yeah, so I think yeah. McTominay would have got more challenges in today yeah. than yeah. Matic did, yeah. for example. Um, we, I had this discussion before, and uh, I think it was during when they, they beat Spurs, etc. Who would be a bigger miss for Manchester United, or who is currently McTominay or Pogba in the middle of the park? Oh. You're loving the tricky ones at this time of the morning, aren't you? <laughs> wow. What can I say? Any more coffee? <laughs> I, I should have followed my advice and had a nap in the evening. There you go. Um, at this moment in time, it's, it's McTominay because Pogba hasn't been involved. Simple as that. Mm. He's, he's, been, he's been out, he's been injured. Um, he hasn't come in and, and put in a, a, a massive performance. McTominay's been solid and, and steady. But uh, over the long period of time, who would you ask me to take? I'd take Pogba. But for this moment in time, McTominay has been missed more than Pogba. Yeah, I... I... I think Pogba's going to go, to be honest. And I think McTominay is obviously, they see him as part of the future, mm. still a young man. And actually, would I be sorry to see Pogba leave the Premier League? Not really. Yeah, everything that, come, that comes around him and with him yeah. as the overall package, I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss that. I wouldn't mind so much if he was doing it on the pitch. But sometimes I, I think a little bit more heart win, wins out. And in this situation... I think they're better off. I think United are better off with McTominay going forward. Um, when do you expect Pogba to leave? After his operation. <laughs> During. <laughs> During the operation. Um, January or the summer or next year? If it's or... not January, it will definitely be the summer. I think that Rayola is definitely trying to get him out in January. I think United are trying to keep him uh, because I think he's... And this is going to sound a bit strange, but 
although he'll have less on his contract in, when he gets to the summer, I think if they try and force him out in January, there's too many questions as to too many alarm bells for the buying club. You know, why are they letting him go in January? It, it, it wouldn't make any sense to me, but uh, certainly Rayola is trying to get him out. There's no, there's no doubt about that.